and this is the uh, meeting of the Conway Board of Selectmen. We're being videotaped by Frontier Community Access Television for viewing uh, later by our residents and the public. Okay, first item on our agenda is meeting minutes for the March 4th meeting. Has everybody had a chance to go over the meeting minutes? They look great. Look good. Uh, any changes or additions? I just had one question about it um, because it, what was down here just differs with my recollection. So I just wanted to, um, and that is the, the Moore and Gustafson proposal. I had thought that they said that they need a variance. Um, the way that it's, it's written down here, um, What would, they need a, what would they need a variance for? For the fencing or something, but... Oh, so variance instead of waiver. Or special permit or whatever. Well, they both so, have to get special permits as, as part of the... Right. Uh, so uh, so the my recollection was that they, that they said that they have to get, that their proposal requires a variance from the bylaw. But I'm not sure about that, so I just wanted to... Throw that out there to see whether anybody else shared that recollection or whether, whether I was... I, I, I do share that recollection. Okay. So I, I would say mm -hmm. replacing waiver from to variance for okay. to take care of that. But with that, uh, they were excellent. Variance for. Yeah, instead of waiver from. <clears throat> okay. Any, any other, any other no. uh, amendments? Yeah. Okay. That's if that's not proof that I read these things. What is? Hey, all right, sure. What's the yeah. difference? All right, a lawyer. <laughs> I'll make a motion that, that we approve the minutes as amended. Uh, do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. Meetings attended by select board members. Philip. Yeah, multiple. Uh, I, uh, uh, collective bargaining sessions with our teachers unions and our IA unions. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say fun, about that. A lot of fun stuff. Yeah, we did a nice uh, six-hour session. That was mm. back to back. And, um, <coughs> okay. Yeah. Um, uh, and the uh, the first uh, committee for the hiring of the new business frontier business manager is met, um, and we have interviews with um, the top the top uh, handful on uh, Friday the 15th. And you got a good response to that? Did, yeah. actually. Good. Good. They, people are legally qualified for the position, which is, you know. That's good. That's, that's a big deal in and of itself, actually. <laughs> yeah, it is. It so, is. And, and they're, some of them are interested in leaving their current district to be with us, so that's always huh? interesting and... Yeah. Bears further exploration. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else, Phil? Not that there should be. <laughs> Robert. Well, we did have the town caucus. Oh, that is which, correct. Yes, yes. You know, I was which, there too. Which we should talk about, or briefly, but, and I think there are some open positions, right? Is yes. there an open school board position? There is an open comedy school committee position. Yeah. And an open planning board position. That's right. Yeah. So, so if anybody is interested, and mm -hmm. I expect we'll be putting something in the visitor, but there are a few open positions, uh, and then and then some elections. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Uh, and I, so I went to another meeting that I've talked about briefly in the past that we call MCAP, the Municipal Coalition Against Pipelines. So it's still a group of people that are sort of watching the horizon over whether we think pipelines are gonna creep back into our region. Um, and so far, and all indications are that that will not happen, although there are some pipelines that are being built um, to expand some capacities, and, and, uh, but not new pipelines. They're all in, in, you know, in place of existing pipelines, so that looks right. okay. Um, we had a meeting of the Capital Improvement Committee, and basically we reviewed... Oh, I was at that, too. Sorry. Yeah. I keep forgetting these. And, and, and we basically reviewed the, uh, you know, Ron Sweet's uh, capital requests. And 
Um, at least we came up with our recommendations so that they can appear in the warrant. So, okay. And, uh, and so, I mean, in other words, we didn't really view our job as to say, no, you cannot do that. We make recommendations that will appear in the warrant. Right, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, and I went with Tom to the short-term rental workshop no, you were no I'm, inter I'm interested you were, in your crib seat, though. You were in, you know, in another meeting, and uh, along with Mario from the Board of Health, and and she, you know, is much more informed about all of the inspections that have to do with B and Bs and Air B and Bs and whether there's a difference. And uh, it was mostly more confusing than anything mm -hmm. over over what the law is, and uh, but. The Board of Health is busy, you know, doing their job, and uh, and I believe there is an opening on the Board of Health too. So, if anybody is interested in joining the Board of Health, I think they would love some help because doing inspections on more of these things and doing sure. bigger yeah. inspections um, is burdensome. Yeah. So okay. that was it for me. Thank you, Robert. Yes, the the caucus was um, was interesting and a challenge. We had to. Um, I don't think we, it's an eight o'clock caucus, we didn't get started to quarter of nine because we had to uh, rouse some more people to come to the, uh, the caucus so we could have a quorum of 25. But once we got all the people there, we, we it went, went, uh, went very well. Yeah. So I, I would just like to say, the rousting of the populace for the quorum is one of my favorite annual Conway traditions. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's always remarkable that there's about 23 and need 25 for a quorum, and there's always two people sitting on the bar that can be dragooned into it. And, I don't, and I, it's the last thing that people, when they expect to go to the bar for a couple of years, the last thing in the world they, is someone to come in the door and say, you have to come down right away because we need a quorum. But it, it, it's one of my favorite traditions, and I, I hope I, I hope somehow we can always manage to keep that one. Well, I didn't want to bring that part. Of it. <laughs> yeah. There were phone calls made too. There yes, yes. You know, so um, and and we ended up with probably thirty or thirty-two. Yes. So yep. we were well over uh, what we needed um, to rouse from the local establishment. Yes. <laughs> um, Okay, next item is public comment. I don't see any of the public You didn't have any meetings? I didn't have any How meetings. How is that possible? Yeah. Well, I, I, Something's you know, wrong. Something's yeah, wrong. Last, last week, um, I was sick like, or something. Uh, no, no, I was up to my neck with other stuff, yeah. uh, business-wise, and um, I didn't get out to any meetings. But I, I do have meetings this week, but I won't no, tell you no, about no. those until next week. I'm sure you do. All right. Uh, uh, no public comment. Okay. Next item is um, signed community compact contract for regional municipal accountant training program at FERCOM. Tom, gonna. That's for the finance committee. You can join the finance committee, Tom. That would be great. Thanks. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Do we have. Um, yeah, that's, uh, this is something that we uh, were asked, you may, you may remember Bob Dean came in and asked that we, uh, we uh, sign on to this uh, agreement for uh, accounting training because it's very difficult to get municipal accountants out here and uh, we, they got money and so we're the lead town so we're the pass-through organization for their funding, and that's what the contract is for. Okay. Okay. Do we do we have a copy of that? Or Should be in here. Is that is that this one? Yep. It's got a lot of different moving parts to it. Okay. But that's that's what it is. There's a bunch of different places uh, for you to sign. Nobody else has to sign anything. Okay. But a vote would be uh, in order. Yeah, we, we've spoken we, about we, we talked about, about this a number of times. I don't think anyone had a question. Yeah, uh, and you know, <clears throat> certainly we've we've been involved in a number of the other uh, community compact um, issues or topics, long range financial planning and <coughs> IT, and it's working out very well for us. And I think this this is a uh, a very appropriate uh, one to get involved with. Any any questions for Tom on this? 
No, they're advertising right now in the recorder. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I'll, I'll make a motion that we um, we sign the community compact contract for regional municipal account and training program that's going to be conducted at FERCOM. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Okay, next item on our agenda is a proposed revision to post community agreement policy. Tom? Now, this came up last time with the Roaring Glen proposal. Uh, I have, you have in your packet a copy of the policy with a section underlined and in italics to set it apart. That's the proposed addition. Uh, so the copy of the draft license application. Um, there's a note on it saying, as public submissions or public documents, do not submit confidential business information. So I thought that was a good thing to uh, make sure that people had a heads up to so they didn't think that they could give the select board something and then have, have uh, some of it remain private information. Any, any comments on that, on that chair? No, I think we all agreed with it when it came up last time, too. Yeah. you have anything else on that, time? No. Do we need to vote on that, or yeah, is that we just we're, accept we're, that? We're yeah, vote. we're okay. We're, we're voting to amend that. your own policy. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, any questions on that amendment? No. Good. No. Okay. I'll make a motion that we amend the uh, marijuana host agreement of application policy to include uh, that a change by Tom. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Okay. All right, next item on the agenda is the draft host community agreement for Philip and Leah Bowden. Tom, are you here for that? Here you go. Okay. I represent the Bowdens there in California because of a personal family emergency. Oh, sorry to hear that. Yeah, Gotta be impressed with our timing though. I mean, you sat here for 60 seconds and you're ready to go. Uh, <laughs> I was told to come at a particular there, time. There you I'm go. As instructed. A finely oiled machine we are. Mm -hmm. So, Tom, I had one question. Um, I mean, there are other things that will come up, but. And it had to do with the top of page two. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me try to, yeah. Let me try to grab that. Mm -hmm. Top of page two. Which section? What section? Well, B. B. So, so, so if we look, if I look at the. Uh, the manufacturing one, the, the manufacturing one in that last sentence talks about marijuana products manufactured by the applicant. In other, in other words, you know, it would be um, the, the, the wholesale receipts means the aggregate purchase price paid for uh, on marijuana products manufactured by the applicant. Right. But in, in the cultivation one, it doesn't say by the applicant, and it just seemed like it would make sense if it did. Uh, it may be trivial and it may be obvious, I don't know, but it sort of says the, 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 it's, it, the aggregate purchase price on marijuana paid by the licensed marijuana establishment. But it doesn't say marijuana cultivated by the applicant or... I'd be happy, or, to, I'd be happy so, to put that in there. That would make sense to me. Yeah. Uh, mostly these are so identical except Mm -hmm. Two sides of the, the business, and and I was just sort of looking for differences like that. Sure, that, that, no, that makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Because it only makes sense if it's cultivated by the applicant. Right. And yeah. Right. Exactly. They wouldn't be paying. I think that would be clarifying. It would be helpful language. Yeah. Could you talk about the reason for having two different licenses? 
Um, sure, you apply before the Cannabis Control Commission for separate licenses. And so sometimes people put it together as one HCA, one host community agreement. I, just for the sake of safety in the past, made it two. Suppose for some reason the Cannabis Control Commission approved cultivation but not manufacturing, for example. Right. You'd have a separate agreement. Right, like like the other applicant, John Moore, is, is just doing cultivation and not manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So they have one, yeah. Right, well, and, and that's even a separate one because it's a craft cooperative. So that's even separate from the cultivation license that uh, Tornado uh, Mountain's applying for. Right, there are different licenses you can apply for and there are different classifications. And one is you apply for a cultivation license as an, let's say an LLC for want of a better term, some sort of Massachusetts organized entity. And then there are also craft cooperative licenses which involve potentially more than one party or potentially more than one site. So the agreement is with each side of the business, not with the whole sort of LLC. Uh, Correct. It's, 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 with, it's with, with each. Well, it's the same business, but there'll be two sides of the business. One will be manufacturing, one will be cultivation. Yeah. If, in fact, at some point they, they decided it was in their interest to separate them out into two separate LLCs, of course, they'd have to come back to you and get approval to do that. But having two HCAs allows that to happen. Mm -hmm. And some accountants recommend that. And there may come a time at which it's appropriate for them to do that. And it will be much easier if they have two HCAs to say, oh, we'll have two licenses from the Cannabis mm -hmm. Control Commission. Right. And we'll have two separate licenses. Mm -hmm. So do you have like a presentation or do you just want me to ask questions or us to ask questions or how Well, you know, my, my presentation really has to do with, with the statute itself and with the Cannabis Control Commission, uh, in part, in large part. Um, you know, the statute talks about costs that are reasonably related uh, to the organization being in town. Mm -hmm. That's a statute and... Um, I, I personally kind of I believe in the rule of law, and that's the law. And I believe that you're all sort of bound to follow law. And I agree. I understand that many municipalities are not exactly following the law per se. Okay, but I, I, I you know I think that's a starting point. Um, I think retail is totally different from cultivation. Mm -hmm. I think when you have retail, it's pretty easy to say. It's going to be 3%, okay? It's going to cost you. You're going to have a police presence. You're going to have sale of marijuana. You, uh, because it's in your town, you might want to have educational uh, costs related to the fact that there's a retail establishment in town. Mm -hmm. But cultivation to me is totally different. Mm -hmm. No one is going to know that these places actually even exist. Okay, and they're not going to have signs up. They're going to be fenced in. They're going to have perimeter. They're going to have perimeter cameras. Um, they're going just, to just, just the one, just, the, just the folks you're representing. Yes. The other, the, the other one is not is proposing not to do that. Okay, I don't know about the yeah, other one. So. Okay, all I know is the CCC is going to want to make certain and pretty clearly in the regulations that it's secure. But um, at least the place I'm representing, it, no one's going to see it, basically. No one's going to know that it's there. Um, it's, you know, surrounded by actually conservation land. It's, it's surrounded by fish and wildlife land, their property. And so it's not going to, and I, and I I imagine that you've talked to the chief of police, and the chief of police has told you whether or not it's going to be a burden on the town in any way. 
So my information is secondhand, admittedly, but I'm told that uh, the chief said that it's, it's not going to be additional cost, it's not going to be a Dewey additional patrols or anything like that. So I'm not sure where the cost comes from, but my clients have agreed in, in their proposal to you to uh, give some money back to the town if they're successful. And growing outdoors is, is something that no one has particularly done in the Commonwealth. Um, and who knows when it's going to be successful? One crop, the crop disappears, then you don't make anything that year, but you put out a lot of money mm -hmm. to make nothing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so you could spend you could spend a, a lot of money and end up with nothing, or you can spend a lot of money and you can end up with a crop. It's it's um, to use in a, sort of an analogy. It's sort of like the old time, you know, with different numbers, the tobacco industry. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when cr people grew tobacco, it was incredibly successful. And other years, I have, I have clients who are tobacco farmers, and they just had mold or they had some problem with their tobacco, and they just unloaded it for whatever they could. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they unloaded it for a couple hundred thousand dollars, but... They spend much more to grow that tobacco. Mm -hmm. I think that's why we're. I think that's why the law talks in terms of a percentage instead of a uh, a fixed figure. Mm -hmm. Because if the if the company doesn't do that well, then they don't. You know. The law talks about a percentage related to the actual cost of the town, and right. as opposed to a, a, you know fixed I, fees. I agree. I agree with that. And you know there there are a lot of unknowns on both sides here. We don't know really what it's going to cost. And on the other side of that, you don't know how much you're going to make on it. So, you know, we've, we've got uh, we've got a balancing act to do here. Right, and that's why we sort of came down with something in the middle. I mean, another way of handling it would be to say that uh, the applicant will pay all the costs up to 3%. That would be one way of doing it. Well, that's exactly what the law says. All the costs up to three percent, basically. Right, the maximum. Right. And people, yeah. but people are sort of focusing on some. That's not exactly some, what the law says. Some well, number, you yeah. know. Yeah. But I agree. I mean, that would that would be a reasonable way of doing it. And if it turned out to be one percent, it'd be one percent. It was two percent. It was two percent. And if it was a half percent, it was a half percent. Absolutely. See, see you know, I, like I, I, I was, I, I was of the position that that the cost to the town would easily exceed three percent. Um, and it, it depends how you define these types of things. And, you know, it, it does, w would the police chief need to increase his budget for, 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 for the Bowdoin's cultivation and manufacturing? Probably not, but would he increase patrol there? Just a little bit, yeah. And so if, if, if he increases patrol, and, uh, you know, d doesn't that mean that there's a percentage of the depreciation of the vehicle and the, the, and, uh, the administration that, that the town has to do to, to, to have a police force? Um, the same thing with the, the um, uh, you know, the, the highway costs that, to, to, to have a, a, a business there to, to occasionally grade the road or whatever. And, um, the, and the other thing is that you know I did I, I have been talking to the school and others have been as well. There there has never been um, at the Conway Grammar School a cannabis curriculum, but they're now talking about putting one in because several parents have have asked them to, and so there would be a cost associated with that with with training up the psychologist and Mr. Gifford and whoever else would be doing that in the sixth grade. But I don't have any numbers for that, but I do know that that would be a few thousand dollars, possibly. Um, but when, and when I just took a look just at those two, you're, that takes you to like 4,000, 5,000, and that's like possibly 3% of the first, um, you know, 100,000 of business, whatever. So uh, to, to me, it, it made sense to do like a graduated thing with more up front and less because the town, that reflects the actual town cost. Um, well, I guess you have to look at it, you have to say, in terms of the curriculum, does it have anything to do with the fact that someone's cultivating in town, or is it that marijuana is legal in the Commonwealth and they want their kids to understand something about marijuana? 
And in terms of the, the chief of police, I guess you'd have to have a Ken in here. And maybe you've talked to Ken. My understanding is it's a not, he's not going to increase patrols. Well, one of my uh, understandings is that at, at the current point, um, there is only a, a five-year mandatory, a single five-year mandatory period of contribution. Mm -hmm. The town's educational costs will be ongoing, which I think is an argument for <coughs> contributing more money up front during those five years um, so that the town can continue that programming after five years. Well, I think that the five years, is it doesn't mean that you can't collect a host community agreement, you can't collect fees. It's not mandatory See, to have just, a host community agreement after five it years. It just means you're going to have to renegotiate something. Which might or might not be successful. Right, but I, 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 I don't, this, this I, is I don't think, I don't, I actually, I, don't, I, I disagree with you and I can probably provide some law on that. But I don't think you're going to be able to operate unless you come to some agreement with regard to the cost of the town after five years. It's, well, right now it's not in the law. I'll put it that way. So that's that's a clear CCC guideline that you know right now, and it might change. But right now, there's there's no provision for anything beyond those five years. So it is a concern to the town, and that is one of the arguments for asking for the higher amount of money is that then that could continue to be spent over time. Well, we, none of us know exactly what the costs are, but if the costs are what you're talking about, then that makes sense. Yeah, sure, the first, for the first $100,000, it doesn't make sense, though, that those costs are not costs which would be attributable to a larger sum of money. Suppose somebody made a half a million dollars or a million dollars, a little million dollars. Um, then the costs are way out of relationship to the cost of the town. And so I don't, I don't disagree that perhaps the best way of doing it is to uh, say it should be the cost of the town up to 3%. I like and, that. And then, yeah. and then you figure out what it is and we figure mm -hmm. out some mechanism for some, some neutral person to decide that if we disagree. Absolutely. I, I, I like that. Neutral person. I'm neutral. Yeah, yeah, I know you're neutral. I'm very neutral. You're very neutral. Uh, leave it there. <laughs> yeah. We're not going any further, you know? Because you have a job to do, you know? You want to you do things with, with money, you know? Like be because of all these unknowns, okay, this is going to be a learning experience over the first number of years. Okay. Both for, both for you know, uh, uh, Tornado Mountain and for us. Mm -hmm. We certainly don't want to burden those entrepreneurs with more expenses than, than we're actually uh, incurring. Mm -hmm. Okay, but on the same, uh, but it's, by the same token, we don't want to say, oh, it's going to be less than the max. Okay, and stick with that number because we don't know what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Expenses up to three percent. Three percent is the max by law. Right. Okay. So that that does that. I know Phil. You think it's, it might be more than that, but the law says three percent, and that's that's as far as we can go. Yeah. Right. The, 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 there's a lot of unknowns. Still, I've been trying to get firmer data, and it's um, on the education side of it. There's a lot of moving parts to all that that you can't quite get numbers so easily the other way. Um, well, that's, that's part yeah. of this learning experience. Yes. Okay. The, the, the one problem with that would be that, that that makes all the costs reimbursable to the town, which might make it hard to get an education program in the schools up and running. Yeah. Um, but I, the, my, my other thing about this was that I, I, I thought that there should be a mechanism for us to have an aim through, through this. Through, to have an annual meeting to sort this stuff out, um, and also to revisit these issues. I, I don't want to put people out of business, but I don't want to get shortchanged. And um, the way to do that is to keep dialogue open. And mm -hmm. um, so, so that I thought these things should have a mechanism to do that. 
Well, we, we would probably. Tommy, you, you think, we would you be think this is acceptable to? I think that's a, I think that's, I We think would that's be reviewing that solution. anyway every year, and as as we go on to find out, you know. Would we? I thought these are three or five year deals, and that's that. Well, no, no, no we're, it's not no, in it. No, I'm not sure we'd be deal. reviewing it at least on a yearly basis. This Lisa, do you think that'd, that'd be going. okay with you guys? I mean, I really love having the agreements be as close as possible, so we sort of have a standard agreement. So when somebody comes to Conway, they would know what we're looking for. Um, so we expect to pay our fair share, absolutely. Um, and if that's a calculation that we that you think is the best calculation to use, we would we would be accept acceptable to that. We would accept that. Um, I also think it would be easier for the town as town residents if they're as similar as possible where they can be so that you're not having to juggle many different contracts with, with different clauses. Um, we think that's in the town's benefit and ours for working as a team to understand how things go along. The only complicated thing for me would be how we split costs among, you know, the multiple <laughs> marijuana businesses that are in town. I think um, that would be by percentage of gross. Receipts. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. That'd be easy enough. You have to yeah. report every year. But but I, I think something for the first year that's that's that would allow us to put program that would allow us to start putting programs into place would be good. Mm -hmm. Maybe for subsequent years, do it on that reimbursement basis. But something to get us started, uh, I think, would be very helpful. You know, I, I, I'm not sure that the, the school program is, is ultimately how much of it's going to be reimbursable, but I don't think my client would have any trouble saying that he's prepared to pay $5,000 or $3,000 up front towards, his, towards the amount that he might owe over time. Is that what you're talking about? I was thinking of it in a percentage term, but... We don't know what the percentage. But we don't know what. We don't know what the answer to this question is. Yes. The answer to this question is yes. That's what you were talking about. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I think you, you were talking about some amount to get started, and uh, yeah, we we would. I, I don't know how the town would do that in terms of its books and finances and mm -hmm. how all that works. It's a little complicated with the schools and where this money goes. And but sure, I would say that we'd be willing to. And, and you know, you mentioned three, four, five. I'm picking the top number of that number, five thousand dollars toward that amount, which would be due and payable. Perhaps the first year, perhaps the first two years. Who knows? We're just going mm -hmm. to see how it works out. All right. So we're we're looking at five thousand dollars, right? And we're looking at up to three percent. Is that what I'm what I'm hearing? Yeah. Okay. Is that amenable to to everyone? Is that amenable to you, Tom? Yeah, do you, do you like that as well? Um, yes, I, I just wanted to clarify that that 5K would be uh, applied towards the 3% calculation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But oh, yeah, it would be yeah. up front so that you could get going. Is that what you're talking yeah. about? Oh, yes. of, of course, yes. Mm -hmm. That seems reasonable. Is that amenable to everyone? Mm -hmm. Okay, Tom, can you can you rewrite your contract? I can rewrite a contract with that. those terms and okay. get back to you. Good. Okay. We come back in a, a week or two weeks. The sooner the better, I think. Okay. okay. Let's try to keep it up and going then. Okay. Yeah. I, I think that was that was the only thing um, in the contract that we were juggling. I think everything else is. Is that correct, Phil? Is that what you? Yeah. Saying? For for uh, for tornado mountains. And I'll make that change yes. that you suggested. Yeah, there are differences. There are lots of little differences between your contract and Tornado Mountain's cultivation contract. And I'm just wondering if they could get aligned more. Uh, and they're very similar. I mean, you know, they're they're very similar, yeah, but we can, we can, but, we can try but to get there are one one. one it, 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 they're so similar. It feels like that should be really possible. Yeah, I don't, I don't know the differences. I haven't it, seen. Yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, perhaps yeah. related to that question, I can ask a question. Um, yeah. Are we writing the contract for you to sign, or is town council writing the contract for you to sign? Our, our town council is going to go over everything. Well, but we, it's suggested that I'm going to write it initially. Right. 
Is and that okay? You get it back. And th th Could, there, there are some differences, but this is the, particularly the payment provision we're talking about. Yeah. And, and I have some specific items for um, Roaring Glen. Under um, 1D, you use the term covered sales. Um, Both of them use that term. Yeah, if, if, if we could just stick with the gross wholesale receipts, it's not that much longer, and it makes it clear um, that that's what you're talking about. Well, what, what's, uh, the, what's the language in the law? Isn't the language in the law gross sales? Gross wholesale receipts. No, no, the language in the law. Is the language yes. in the law gross sales? Gross wholesale receipts. Is that the language in the law? Yes. Okay. Uh, as, as I have read it. That, that it's actually defined in their agreement in 1B. Yes, it is. Um, but that was flagged as something by our town councilors being something to work with. So that's right. 1D suddenly has this new term co covered sales that's not defined anywhere. And in section three, um, I'm sorry. Can, so I'm looking at my draft, um, our draft okay. agreement, and we um, presented two potential CI payment amounts. And what I'm reading is gross wholesale receipts here. So what what do were you questioning? What Look at your D. Down down D. a little lower D. Financial records, the company shall maintain financial records on its covered sales made during the CI period and shall make the term sure covered the sales that he's talking about. Yes, can we use the term gross wholesale receipts instead of covered? Uh, you know. I, I see no problem with that. I, yeah, I okay. Think it was. These are all very straightforward. Mm -hmm. uh, in section three, you use the word proved. I believe it's a typo for provided. If you could confirm that, that would be good. Page three, uh, what, what section? Uh, section section three. three under town obligations. You use the word proved. Second. I believe it should be provided. What, what line? Second full sentence. Oh, yeah. Second full sentence, second line. Such documentation, second information, participation, cooperation to be proved by the town. Shall be. Provided. Provided. Right. I believe proved is a typo for provided. If you could Correct. confirm that at some yep. point, that would be helpful. Yep. And under section nine, uh, third line from the bottom, you say hereby agree the re the renegotiated payment. I believe it should be hereby agree to the renegotiated payment. If you could confirm that at some point, that would be helpful too. Should we should agree the way it is? They'll negotiate in good faith the payments made under section one year out and hereby agree the new, that the, the two the renegotiated payment. And two two shall continue. To the renegotiated payment. Hereby agree two. I guess I'm looking at mine. Is it maybe is it, different? Is it two? Right, we're talking about her oh, yeah. proposal. Uh, yeah. yeah, we're talking about her proposal. Yeah. Okay, that's all I had. All right, so we're, we're basically in agreement here. Yeah, and I guess the only thing that we talked briefly about is. You come up with these figures, this is the town's figures, and I think, gosh, that really doesn't have anything to do with us. I, the, the town well, then, then, we, then we negotiate that. We negotiate that, and if we can't, if we can't figure it out, do, should we put a mechanism in now that we'll, we'll jointly select a person to the arbitrator to decide that? Do you, do you want to go through a, a standard arbitration clause then, put it in there? Sure. No. Okay. Yeah. No? Why not? It's no. expensive. The parties should have to agree to a, a, a town resident as a neutral arbitrator. Uh, yeah. No, we want a professional. That costs money. The town Who's going to pay for that? Well, it would be a shared expense. 
What's one day of arbitration? What's in, what, it, that's a thousand bucks. Minimum. Well, it's not a day. It's, yeah, it's, probably, hour, but it's probably on the papers. It's probably an hour. How, how do you want to work that? I mean, I could say we'll select an arbitrator, you select an arbitrator, you select an arbitrator, and then they select a third party whose decision shall be final and binding. We don't have to go through the expense of AAA arbitration. But we select somebody, you select somebody, and they select somebody. Could we consider that if we can't come to a resolution? Is that yeah. what we're talking about? Sure. If we can't agree, then it would go kick up to an arbitrator? Yeah. We'll start off with negotiation for sure. Okay. How do you want to do this? I, um, you know. Yeah, I, I like the select board having authority. I'm, I'm nervous about, because all these things are subject to interpretation, and mm -hmm. there's probably no court guidance on this type of thing, on some of these definitions. We'd be like groundbreaking stuff on how much of a given uh, uh, education program is directly caused by this, and how much of it is caused by societal Because so that's what you're talking about. With, with all, you're with talking all due respect, you can't. Uh, you, I, that's, you that's why I don't want to head in that direction. No, that's what you're talking about. If we can't agree and we don't have arbitration, we're going to court. Yes, we don't want that. We don't right. have right. that's why I'm we want arbitration. Not, wait a second, I'm not saying we're going to court. <laughs> I know, I'm <laughs> saying we're going to have a third <laughs> party. Wait. Decide that. You can't be the guy to decide it with all due respect. Because right. so they're not neutral. So, Phil, what you're but saying I am is. Neutral. Phil, I'm the most Phil. neutral in the world. Are you saying that the <laughs> select board has the final word? Is that what you're saying in this? I like that. Well, I, okay. Um, he'd like it, but I, it's not acceptable now. Okay? It's got to be a neutral person. Yeah, we'd like it if we could decide. That would be helpful. We'd like it if we make the final decision about what's related. Now, you know, we'd like that, okay, Phil? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, neither one of us would like it, so we'll, we'll just pick a third person. That's the point of arbitration. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, let, let's. Some sort of a soft arbitration clause. Absolutely. Not a not a triple A. Not triple A. Okay. We just select somebody, you select somebody, and they select somebody who's knowledgeable about town government. Okay. Fine. Is, All right. that, is that agreeable? Yeah. To everybody? With some with something about the cost of it being dealt with as well. Although well, I mean, the clause would have to take care of all that. It can't be. It'd be the cost of the third party would be shared. It's not going to be that much yeah. money. That was yeah, it'd be shared. Okay. And and this you know hopefully, you know what what we tiers. we can negotiate and without having that third party involved. And I would hope that 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 third party, um, what we would give to them would be somewhat minor. Hopefully, you know. So we're not. I don't think we're talking big money here. All right. Okay, so we're we're all set, Tom and Lisa. Are we are we in agreement with all those items? I think so. Okay, yeah. I'll give you something um, as soon as I can. Okay, it's the thing, you know, if we're arguing over not arguing, but if the dispute is over one percent or two percent, and the cost of arbitration exceeds the amount in dispute, that would be really silly for all of us. Well, so well ab that's absolutely all. good motivation for well, it. Not yeah. to, like <laughs> that'd be good motivation to <laughs> get to the table to negotiate. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. Obviously. Yeah. obviously, okay. So we're in agreement on that. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for okay, coming thank in. You. Thank you. We're almost there. Good luck on the finances. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Lisa. Did, um, Do you have anything else for us? I think um, Phil had a question. Did you have, you, you had mentioned earlier in the meeting that you had some questions about our yeah. HCA? Yeah. The, the, the extent to which the uh, your requirement for a variance is integral to your plan. So I, I, like that kind of went by pretty fast about the security or the fencing or whatever. So, so your and, question is about the plan security? And, and what you said was you, you weren't sure whether or not you'd need a variance. Um, Do you have any, any further information on that now? Um, yeah, yes, I, I do believe that the correspondence I had with the planning board, I were you copied on that? Um, uh, they they um, agreed or concurred that the planning board's protective bylaws do not require a variance for the surveillance. However, um, the CCC 
will be implementing the regulations and that's a place where there could be security changes that they want to see. So not at the town level, and we can't know what CCC wants until we submit our application. So that, so I, I do believe that was the work that I did after we met. And um, I'd be happy to forward that uh, correspondence with the planning board to you. Um, and then to reiterate, we, we recognize, however, we do need a special permit from the planning board. That's absolutely for yeah, sure. Yeah, as do all applicants. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. That, that's just a hearing process. Mm -hmm. so, so you'll have to negotiate that with the CCC. Correct. I, I mean, you know, not, uh, this doesn't feel like it's our issue. Uh, well, I mean, I, see, I, I don't know. Like, to the extent that we're, if, if we sign a, a host agreement, are we approving of the plan as it exists before us? And be, because I, I thought no, that, that I think the answer is no. I'll jump in. I'm no. a lawyer, but the, pl the plan the, and proposal will change. It will go back and forth between the CCs as far as I understand it. Mm -hmm. They ask many people to make changes. So we could not possibly present a complete complete plan. And, and those agreements say you're subject to all of the applicable yeah. laws. Yeah. Right. The security agreement is whatever the CCC wants. Right. 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 Right now they have a law and they want certain things. Mm -hmm. Whether they modify that in a particular situation, it's up to them. Right. Yeah. They're pretty specific about what they want right now. Mm -hmm. This is mostly about community impact. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Was that your only? Okay. That was Lisa. Sorry. Okay. So um, we will coordinate um, out of this meeting somehow to get you uh, the same language as what you're asking. As much as possible. Me. Maybe it's, you can. Yes, I don't know. But uh, <laughs> they're so similar today, and that it feels like that would be a good goal. I agree. Yeah, but you're not legally obligated to do that. No, no, you're not. Yeah. These no. these will evolve over time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, under new business, we have a joint meeting with the finance committee. Welcome, finance committee. How are you guys doing? All right. Thanks for Good. Good. Okay. We have the uh, the first item is the proposed town budget for fiscal year 2020, including operations and special articles. Um, do you have an introduction or do we go right to the chief on that? Um, well, you can see there are a number of items to cover under this. I've given you a, uh, two new Excel sheets. Um, one of them is based on current fire department policy and one of them is based on proposed fire department policy. One raises the budget $12,150, the other $22,400 something. So that's the difference between the two Excel sheets that you have. Okay. And uh, Chief Baker is here to um, uh, talk about his, uh, the situation of the proposal. The, the situation basically was that um, the town employee handbook calls for uh, employees to be trained, uh, to be paid if they're undergoing mandatory mm -hmm. training. And the fire department does have mandatory training and um, and uh, we are now beginning to, just now beginning to pay the employees for that mandatory training. Uh, there will be a proposal to raise the, the level of mandatory training. Um, that's what Chief Baker is here to, to talk about. Chief, you want to give it to us? Okay. Um, my figure's a little bit different than Tom's because after I met with Tom, I got thinking about it in the... I feel that I had a figure in there for myself on some of this stuff too. And I figured that the hourly uh, training sessions that go on, whether it's two hours a week or four hours a week or six hours a week, I ha they are covered under my salary. So I readjusted these figures so that I am only asking for, uh, to go along with this, before I go any further, to go along with this, the, the, the bylaws, the way the, the, our SOPs are standing operating procedure guidelines that we have now with fire department, requires them to put a minimum of two hours of training in a month. Wow. Okay? 
So that's the, that's that's the mid-range proposal that's that the first have. Uh, to uh, go along with that, we require them to do a minimum of two fire academy courses a year that are two hours apiece that they come out here to do them. Either and, here or Asheville. And these are your volunteers? And these are all our volunteers. Well, on call. On call volunteers. volunteers. Mm -hmm. that's, that's everybody. That's the firefighters, the juniors, everybody that is involved with the fire service. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's uh, four hours a month? Two, 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 two courses? No, it's, right now it's, it's two hours a month per employee and two courses in the course of a year that are two hours a piece. So like I figured out like for me I I this runs past you you don't have to do this for me I'd only be paid an extra four hours a year for the fire academy courses. Uh, my deputy chief Adam Baker who who's always a full time a highway employee he'll get twenty eight hours additional a year. The fire firefighters will get twenty eight hours additional a year for fifteen of them, and the juniors will get the twenty eight hours a year. So that that's their two hours a month and their Two courses. So it's two nine. months plus four. All right. And that comes up to nine thousand four hundred seventy-one dollars. Now, we are thinking of updating it. We haven't yet. We're, we've got some whole bunch of different problems, and these SOPs haven't been rewritten in the last four or five years. Standing operating guidelines or SOPs. We are thinking, because what they really do right now is the firefighters train twice a month, two hours a night. And we do the two fire academy courses still. So the actual firefighters are training four hours a month instead of two. But our actual requirement page that they have in their hands now says that they only have to do one, okay? To meet their fire department standings. So if you if you if you're gonna pay them for the two, which is the larger one of the two, it comes up to seventeen thousand five hundred more additional dollars a year for training. Uh, I admit, Tom, it was nice to get me this county uh, survey for all the fire departments. After reviewing it all, some departments in here pay training in different ways. Some departments don't state at all how they do it. So it's a mixture of, you can't, I, I can just quickly rearrange it. Burniston, uh, Burniston pays, I should be the town's tip. Right now, probably some of these other towns are paying for the training, they're just not, they're just not listing it mm -hmm. in this guideline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Burniston, Charlemont, uh, Heath, Montague Center, Sunderland, Whaley, Northfield, New Salem, and Shelman Falls reported that they do pay their firefighters for wages for training. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which I guess we never did before because I, I, I never realized until the new handbook. We never gave the firefighters a handbook before, ever. Other than the ones that the fire officers put together and handed to them. Mm -hmm. So we never really knew that we had to pay them for training. According to Tom, when it came out, this, this, this not, this, I guess it was in the last one too, but we just never realized it. And, and I guess you talk everywhere in the state, I mean, a lot of departments, I often wonder why county's budget was much, fire budget, is much lower than the other towns. <laughs> That's why, because we weren't paying our firemen for training. Mm -hmm. All right, so you're basically recommending 28 hours a year for the firefighters. That 28 training. hours a year is the uh, that's at the at the figure it is right today. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And that that's what you're recommending. That's payment. what we're recommending at this point. I think they would be more than happy with it. Now, okay. when we start talking about how these other towns compensate, they do it in many ways. Some pay by the hour. Some pay by stipend. Some pay. Uh, just one what down. By second. Does it mean a set dollar amount? Yes. What? Set dollar amount. One town, I can't I'll find it somewhere, appropriates ten thousand dollars a year for firefighter training. And it's divided to the number of the number of firemen that go to train. How they equate that down from there. So that's that's about as much as the uh, twenty eight hours. Right. That's about as much as twenty eight hours. So what's your recommendation? My recommendation is go by the hour because Okay. If 
the figure but, probably won't. I, I, I shouldn't say it. The figure probably won't come up to that dollar amount because I'll tell you why. Sometimes people don't show up for training. Right. So should yeah. they be paid when they don't show up? No. No. We were just do a, a, a pay sheet for training and list it, and they sign it and prove that they had been at the training session. And then we have perfect documentation for paying. Yeah. Is so there a penalty for not coming to training? training? Yes. I mean, they're, they're, I mean well, other than not paying, though, which Tom brought which that is up again. Yeah. This is what we have to do in a new SOP or a new set of guidelines. We never stipulated what the what uh -huh. if you don't show up for training, what's going to be. Yeah. Done. Yeah. And you really do. They, you've got to have firemen have training because if you don't, mm -hmm. they're not. They're making them, themselves and other firefighters susceptible to be getting injured on on the job yeah. Absolutely. because yeah. they don't know what was required them. <coughs> so I, I, these are like stupid questions. I but one, one of the things that um, that colleagues in the other towns are always mm -hmm. telling me is. Um, what a great, what, you know, what, how impressed they are with the Conway Department, the numbers that you have. That, yes, we have. That the community that's created by it and everything. And I, I think Waitley, I think Waitley only has a handful of people. Yep. Most um, of them do. And I know Charlemont only has a handful of people. And I think when you talk about training and you only have four or five volunteers, right. the expense is a lot less. Probably it's... Um, right. And, and so, so I, the... So it seems like that's a fairly big court cohort of people to train. It's 17 people. So uh, are there enough fires for everybody? Well, actually, actually not. There's, there's, actually, there's, there's the, all together, bodies, there's 21, 23 in the force. So is there enough, is, does it make sense to train them all? Is everybody? Yes, you should. Because you, you can you can never tell what time of day you're going to have a call, exactly. or what day of the week it's going to be, or who's going to be available well, to go out on a call. Yes. So with this mix of these numbers that we have, we can we can pretty much guarantee daytime four to six, nighttime ten to fifteen, eighteen. Sure, not all of them, of course, yeah. unless you've got a big structure. If it happens to be in the middle of the night and they're all just have to be all sleeping in bed and they would all come out for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've had that happen too. But so and then the so so that's that's good. So the, the, the other the other question I had is just. Um, just pay, paying junior, so the juniors are the high school kids? Uh, yeah, they're 14, 18. So does now, it, do they get paid the same as? Yes, they do, because we have one pay scale for everybody, no matter how many years they've been on service. Now, let me explain this to you first, before you jump on that. You asked a minute ago, why is Conway so successful in having a higher number of fire department in most towns? And I'm going to tell you, it relates right back to the junior fire squad, because 65% of the full adult-sized firefighters we have today were juniors at one time. Mm -hmm. And these other towns, some of them don't have juniors at all, or they have just one or two. Asheville has just one now. So, and they've only got, in the daytime, they've only got two people responding. And then the weekends, you're lucky if they can come up with four. So at this point, you're recommending one day a month would be mandatory. Right. Like, and, and you may want to increase that at some point. Today. I would may want to. Well, well, we're going to. Most people will be coming to the them, but they won't be paid for the second one. Uh -huh. We may eventually do that down the road, but at least this is the start. Absolutely. Of meeting the state requirements. That would be my suggestion. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So you're talking about a maximum of nine thousand something. Ninety five hundred. Yeah. yeah. Ninety five hundred. Anybody else going to have a question? No. Um, I'll make a motion that we uh, accept the recommendation of the chief for training, uh, additional training for our firefighters. I have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Now, this will take effect on July 1st. Yes. Right. Yep. I'll make a question. Now, Tom mentioned before that if somebody was to file the state, they could go back to retroactive. I don't think you were going to have that happen. All right, we, we, we don't even but, want to go there. Um, yeah. Yeah. I will tell them that after July 1st, that's where it's going to be. That's right. If, better, better times are coming. Well, after the town meeting. Well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. But it's okay. going to be right there in your budget, so. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Tell them they so that be a, will that be a separate line or will that just be added into another line? Yeah, right, it'll be in your budget. In your budget. Okay. Not so come to town meeting. Yeah, okay. Great. So Thank you, we're Bob. looking at the old, the new fire department policy handout here. That, 
on the worksheet. It's increasing twenty one thousand thirty seven dollars and increase of eleven thousand forty three dollars. That was my no, 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 that was that, that was changed. So so mid range, we're looking at mid range now. Mid -range. The one so that's called another, mid range. Another one hand out next week. Mid range. Mid range. See on the bottom. And okay. it's not going up a eleven. It's going up nine five. Thousand, yeah, it's going not going up. It's going up nine. Yeah, and if something comes up at town meeting, I'm more than happy to uh, speak no, to well, it. Well, I would do so. Sure. Okay. Great. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Have a good evening, all right? Yeah, you too. So overall, then, we proposed the budget back in January of 57468 So we're saying the total budget then will increase by $9,500 over there. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? We take it slower. Fiscal year 20, originally you requested a budget of 57468 for the fire department. You're mm -hmm. saying now it's going to go up by $9,500 on top of that? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. I just mention that because what's on the sheet here doesn't tally what's up to 57468. It's a new expense. I think you want to check these numbers again. It's all time. Yeah, we're... we're yeah. yeah, that's... that's yeah. Thanks. That was assuming a twelve thousand one hundred fifty dollar increase. Yep. Yes, because there's, there's a difference. It's about two thousand dollars on the fiscal year twenty budget versus your baseline here for the old fire department budget. That's all. Yeah. Thanks. Tom, what are the, what are the two two twenty entries here? Just it's you have two twenty in your twenty. One of them is salary, and one of them is operating. Okay. No. Nah. Salary and is operating. Yeah, I need to get. Together with you, I should tell you Tom this one here. It seems the budget that I presented this last year, line items, we've got some confluted new line items now that well, I don't even have in my budget. Right. I, I, yeah. so, well, I wish that somebody would present the, them to me so that when I put a budget together for the select board and the finance committee, I got the right categories. Thank you. I, I, I'm right there with you. You get it. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, those are count numbers, right? Okay, next item. Open Space Committee and Rose Field, Riverbend Meadow, mowing. Tom, what do you got on that? Uh, due to a complex series of negotiations between committees and town staff, um, the Open Space Committee would like to add uh, uh, I forgot exactly what I added. It, it is included in your in your sheets there. It's under the, uh, right? 270, uh, 170 series mm -hmm. is up from what it used to be, and um, that represents it's something like a thousand fifteen hundred dollars in um, in additional expense for mowing. We don't know what the real figure is going to be. We may not know it by the time we have to sign the warrant. Yeah. But this is for mowing the the uh, the big meadow out there, the, the, the walking path, on, right? on a more frequent basis than it would be done if it were simply maintenance. Mm -hmm. So it's it's uh, more of a manicured approach that the yeah. Open Space Committee is interested in taking because so many people walk there, they walk their dogs. We want to keep the ticks down, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Open Space Committee has agreed to ask for that money and have it be in their budget. It's fine with our accountant if it works out that way. Mm -hmm. We will bid it so that two separate invoices are submitted. We've had that arrangement for the last, since I've been here practically. So, uh, that's so they won't be putting that out to bid separately? It'll no, just no be it'll, it'll be part of the contract. Just just, bid, they're, yeah. they're just willing to pay for it because they're asking for it. Yeah, I, I think that that's too much. That, that's too. That's too much for that property. I think it. Uh, well, we won't pay for it. Bush hogging it a couple times a year is fine. Jack Lockett's been doing that on his own uh, for years. He was, he was doing it more frequently than that. He's no longer doing it. They're interested in keeping up the regime that he had. So maybe we can just offer him just a, a fraction of the fifteen hundred dollars as a way of saying thank you and have him have him keep doing it. No, he's not interested in doing it anymore, it's my understanding. You have a lawn tractor? No, no, but there are people nearby that do, and they'd probably be interested. $1,500 to, to mow that. And that. That's the maximum. It may, it may cost 500 yeah. As a budget item right now, that, that's, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be that much, Phil. Um, yeah. 
I like it wild. I like it wild. I think tall grass is great. Okay. Yeah. You can debate it with uh, Janet and get back to us. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, next item. Uh, frontier capital spending. What do we have on that? Uh, I had been expecting a more formal communication from Frontier about the amount that we were, we were, we are being assessed for their bond, for their capital uh, borrowing. Uh, a month and a half ago, we got an email saying, you know, here are the figures we have. Yeah. And I was expecting something in the budget itself. Oh. Uh, there wasn't anything in the budget itself. So the numbers that I plugged in are simply operating and transportation as usual. So I did not have it in the budget oh. otherwise. Oh. And I put it under, um, uh, you'll see it in there as a 67,167 item. Mm -hmm. um, and I've just uh, assigned it free cash as the source. Mm -hmm. uh, it brings our the free cash that will roll over down to $66,000. We're fortunate <coughs> to be able to do this. Um, so, so that's a... When you said you were expecting more formal, what, I, I don't quite understand what you feel you're missing. Or, I'm sorry. Yeah. What you feel that you're missing or what, what would be helpful to you to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish? I, I was expecting it to be presented as part of their budget. Yeah. And it wasn't even on here. So I, I had to go back to the email that came out six weeks ago and said, you know, this is, this is, you know, your, this, what you're slated for, for the expense. So that, that's why I didn't, that's why it didn't appear in this budget, is because I thought I was going to get it as part of the frontier budget. I didn't, and then just, I so I just put it back in now. That's all. Yeah. Our it town didn't, treasurer, it didn't make Warner. it into this. Yeah. Our town treasurer, Jane Warner, said that she was recommended 31100 something to put in. For, that's for the $3.5 million bonding issue that the Frontier Regional School is seeking. What, did, what does it say on the sheet? Yeah, 37137. Sorry. 37137. Not 67167. Mm -hmm. Okay, 37. Okay, good. That sounds about right. That's right. Right. Uh, right. Here, yeah. yeah, so anyway, that's, it's in there, it's just, it wasn't part of Frontier's budget, which I think it probably should be in future years. Interesting. Yeah, it was, it's an assessment to the town. I, yeah, no, it's a completely separate process that we did. It's right, voted right. months before the regular budget. So it, it just it just uh, wrong-footed me a bit there. Mm. But I got it back in now, so all right. Yeah, it's all okay. Okay, good. <laughs> well, it has okay. to be any other questions? Well, when's it going to be fine? It's going to be fine, like because the frontier regions are voting their final budget when? Sometime in the next two weeks. I have to right. Um, 21st is the... Uh, That's the Conway Grammar School. Yeah, the final budget was voted on... The 5th. The 5th. Oh. Yeah, and it's the same. Fair. It is the same. Oh, okay. Yeah. And the yeah, other right. towns were um, represented on MOS, but we did such a good thing at the Grammar School that week before, that was, it was all the same numbers. Okay. The other three towns love the Frontier budget this year, by the way. Okay, sure, of course. Yeah. 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 All right, next item is the clerk salary to include dog license fees. And uh, I, I, I think we can just table that for okay. now. Okay, let's mm -hmm. table it. Good. Um, so this, and now we're just down to recommendation. Uh, I'll, I'll just say here's a draft warrant. Yeah. Obviously there's nothing in Article 2. Um, once the Conway Grammar School budget is finalized, I'll just import all the numbers I mean, I could start importing them now, but from the Excel sheet that you have to this um, warrant, these, these so, are the, the these are the numbers so far. Once I uh, I uh, recalculate that fire department ask, if the Conway Grammar School's numbers are the same, you'll see what you see on that Excel sheet now in this Article Two. Mm -hmm. um, all of the uh, warrant articles in here are directly from, also from the Excel sheet, mm -hmm. uh, at least the, the money articles. Mm -hmm. One thing that we don't have yet, and those go all the way down to uh, Article 24. Um, Article 24, 
I have been led to believe that we need an annual article authorizing the treasurer to spend from the Medicare revolving fund. So I'm putting it in. Yeah. Um, this is, uh, it's much easier for her to have a revolving fund, which is why she asked for it, uh, but we do need an authorization to vote from it uh, annually. Uh, Article 25 is the Community Preservation Fund. We don't have numbers for that yet. I usually generate those uh, with Lee and uh, the Community Preservation Committee mm -hmm. uh, once we have all our other numbers in. So that should be almost ready to go now. That would require a Finance Committee vote? Um, no, I mean all of these at this point are Finance Committee recommendations. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm a little hesitant about Article 27. What? It's my favorite part of the warrant so far. Right, and I think, <laughs> I, well, what I'm wondering is, I mean, it would be awfully politic to actually talk to the standard B&B owners around here. There's a distinction, which I learned at the uh, workshop that Bob went to, if you have three or two or one rooms that you rent and serve breakfast for, it's called a, uh, a bed and breakfast home. Oh. And bed and breakfast homes are exempt from this tax. Oh. If you have a, an, a, an establishment, a bed and breakfast establishment, that's if you have four or more rooms that you rent and serve breakfast to. And I don't know the status of the existing bed and breakfasts that are registered as bed and breakfasts with the town clerk as businesses so that we know where they are, that sort of thing, and, we, and they get inspected. All of that, all these concerns that have arisen now that we have uh, Airbnb. Um, I don't know if any of them are bed and breakfast establishments there. and this would affect them. Yeah. Um, any information and intelligence uh, regarding that would be helpful because if they are exempt, then I don't have any problem with going forward with this as is without consulting them. Um, if there were bed and breakfast establishments, we might just want to check in and say, hey, we're going to tax you at 6% or we're thinking about it. And Mario and didn't know of any. I'm sorry? Mario didn't know of any that were okay. four or more. Okay, that, that's good. Rented four or more bedrooms. Um, I, I, I was just suggesting being a little bit cautious, and I can work with, with Ginny on that, too. So the, the one thing about this, Tom, is that the, the reason that this is so attractive to me is that Airbnb does this on their own. They Airbnb right. deducts their taxes, and they cut the check to the town. The, right. the landowner, the property owner, the homeowner doesn't have to mess with this, doesn't have to do the calculations, doesn't have to send a check to the town. So that's, to me, the great benefit in all this. And that, you know, I, I didn't want it to be a, a situation where people actually have to, that this makes their life more difficult. Because the way that it's set up statewide, I thought with the cooperation of Airbnb, this was done. The reason the language is like this is because this is how they wanted it. Um, and, and the... Uh the, the, the wording of the article will really be to amend the article that we passed last year, which accepted right. the, um, the right. law. But there is already uh, misinformation going throughout the town about what this does. And people are being told that their Airbnbs, they'll, they'll have to send a check for everybody that comes in there and blah, blah, blah. And it's just not true. Airbnb right. does it. Okay. Right. And they're probably exempt anyway. All right, next item is a recommendation on pay raise. Tom, do you have anything on that? I do. Um, not at this time. Traditionally, that's been a function of the Finance Committee recommending it to the Select Board, who would then uh, vote on that as part of their recommendation on Article 2. Do you guys have any recommendations on it? And they don't have a quorum tonight either, so no. they can't vote on anything. They can't do anything. Okay. I have, um, there's something I'd like to discuss with that, but it would require an executive session because um, uh, to, to discuss the, 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 um, the correlation between the negotiated salary increases with the other town employees at the school and, and this. And um, I, I'd like to go into, I'd like to put this on. An, why to, as why, a, as why a, do we need to? Uh, you know, our recommendation is our recommendation. The school recommendation is yeah. their recommendation, right? 
Has the personnel committee have any been conferred on this at all? No, we don't. We don't consult with the personnel committee because there's there's numbers and then there's being publicly undercut, having your having the town's negotiating position publicly undercut. So the the and um, did. I can't go into detail, um, but it would be a short executive session, and uh, do we need to, no, so it, like so it's, it's not on the agenda, right? Um, but it's very much relevant to the issue. Um, and we could have that before the next select board meeting, just to uh, have Phil okay. be able to present something yeah. on that. All right, let's do that before the next select board. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> okay, recommendations on warrant articles. Um, well, this, the finance committee is not ready to go forward yeah. with recommendations at this point. Okay. Um, we'll table that. But uh, I would encourage the select board to go through these. If anybody does have any issues with any of them, needs any more information on them, please let me know. This goes for you guys as well as us, so that when we do go through them, we can we can take uh, votes fairly fairly expeditiously. Oh, uh, just one more thing about the warrant. Article twenty nine. Uh, the planning board might have had something for the uh, for the warrant, but it will not. So there will be no amendment of the planning board bylaws um, this year. So it's going to be a short warrant, which is good. That means a less expensive one to mail out. But okay. It should be good, good for everybody. Um, the treasurer is um, proposing uh, to have, instead of being the sole trustee of the OPEB fund, to have a uh, uh, the treasurer, the town administrator, and a representative of the board of selectmen um, be the uh, joint custodians of that trust fund. She would prefer to, sp to spread the responsibility and accountability of the decisions made regarding that uh, beyond her particular office. Okay. Yeah, that's well, what, what, um, what decisions is she making on it? Investment decisions. Just investment decisions. Yeah. And, and we, we have we have those recommended by uh, who's a Vanguard? We we, we haven't we have is it United Bank? Is it Unibank. Unibank? Unibank. Uh, Unibank, yeah. yeah. We we, we so, do get recommendations. She has requested that the burden of that responsibility um, be shared. Okay. That's that makes a lot of sense actually. Right. For Frontier, we make and, this, the and, same decision, and, and the school yeah. committee makes the decision as a whole after receiving multiple options and usually a presentation. Uh, so that makes sense. It's, it's a big decision. Yeah. Uh, again, we have a bill from a prior year, this time for $6.09. That's a good one. And then um, uh, Pixie Holbrook is here to discuss um, uh, and what's on here is Article 32. Just uh, briefly, uh, the Board of, uh, that's not submitted by the town ministry, that's Board of Health. Um, the Board of Health is, uh, would like the select board to be authorized to enter into a 10-year contract with the option for a five-year extension for a recycling vendor. So uh, that's um, something that came out of the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District. Uh, if the um, finance committee had a recommendation on that, you'd be welcome to, but don't feel you have to. Yeah. Um, not. So this is a pretty rough document so oh, okay. far. There's a lot of cutting and pasting. Yes. If you see any um, submitted buys or recommendations that are wrong, please let me know. I have a whole bunch of them coming from me. If anybody else wants to take ownership of them, okay. that's fine too, right. including the select board. Yep, yep. But uh, so that's um, oh, and and there is a, a, a long proposed revision for of the personnel bylaw coming from the personnel committee. Um, those are all of the items that I have so far. We do have, as I said, uh, Pixie to speak to a resolution. Okay, that's uh, items not anticipated. So we're going to find yeah, and and the language is under Article Thirty Two in the document oh. that you have. Again, this is a draft right. warrant. Yes. 
So we're going to review the Conway Grammar School budget on the 18th. That's not for next week. We just want to figure out their, their final out. their final number till after the 25th. But we're we, just trying to figure out when, when the finance committee should gather and make a final recommendation on, on Article Two and the other uh, articles. I think the number the, for that is what it's going to be. In April one, you it's want final vote for us. Well, the um, it's the Brock Thursday for for, for for finalizing the war. And you have to we have to meet the meeting other than I know. What, what? The, the Conway Grammar School meeting is on the tw March 25th. Well, that, that, that's, of course, also a Monday night, also a select board meeting night. Right. So the final numbers... Um, 21st, wait. 21st. Oh. This is Thursday. Oh, Thursday, the 21st, right. We're meeting the 25th. Okay. So the 25th would be a, a good date to finalize Article 2. Okay. And then um, make recommendations on... On the rest of the articles. Okay. Mm -hmm. what, and what's the drop? What's the drop dead date again? The following Monday, twenty fifth. Well, the, two the, weeks from tonight. The, right. the select board is slated to sign the warrant on April eighth. April eighth. So that does give us April first as a as a backup in case there are any uh, any outstanding items for the warrant. It's an appropriate. We have a, a building over here. Yeah. yeah. Pixie, okay. so you have something? Thank yeah, you. Uh, just quickly, um, I'm also uh, representing Bill Como um, from Barbell's Ferry Road. Um, we've been approached by a fellow named David Detmold, who oh. is organizing uh, statewide um, the changing of the Massachusetts state flag and seal. Um, and the request is for us to, uh, town by town, uh, bring this to town meeting as a resolution to create a state commission to look into those changes and ultimately make the change. Um, if any of you are like me, I said, what's wrong with our flag? You unplural it and you see that it's a Native American with his um, sword pointed down and over his head is this very strong white man's arm with a sword that looks just like Miles Standish's sword. And so this is uh, considered not the policy that we want to go forward in. Uh, there may have been some original intent. Um, we have looked into what the original intent. It wasn't entirely attractive and pro-native. Um, some uh, Eastern Massachusetts legislator has been trying for 20 years to make this change. I think he's since retired, but they're trying to coordinate this with the 400th uh, anniversary of the landing of the Pilgrims in 2020. So, so far, uh, Gil, uh, Wendell, Orange has passed it, and so there's a concerted effort this spring to have each town consider this resolution. Is that the language in the resolution that you're passing around? Like Everything good comes from one. Uh, well, I have a fact sheet that accompanies it. All right, all right. <laughs> it's, uh, all right. Uh, in fact, it was considered, I was supposed to, it's, you know, it's pages. You don't want the fact sheet. You don't want that. <laughs> but I did submit it to Tom today. Um, that yeah, that defines it better. I can see. I should have had it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think Joe Comerford yeah. has okay. initiated this as a bill, Natalie Blay also. So they're looking to all of us to please support them as town resolutions. Okay, any questions? <laughs> Okay. So you're not looking for the board to pass no, it? Right, you, no, you've already, doing, no, we're not going to do anything. Right, you've already turned in. Right, but uh, I don't want to, no. i, I got to yeah. be careful because I was told I had to get it in by March 11th. I do not want a special town meeting. But if these, I want to make sure everyone understands this is something to be done in the spring. So I must have done the process incorrectly. Um, so, so long <laughs> as the town clerk does not receive the petition, until Thursday or afterwards. Uh, Can you we'll make go. that happen, Lisa? <laughs> okay, because it is something for the spring. Mm -hmm. You're just asking for commission. Yeah, that's, that's for commission. For commission. Right. right. Yeah. Hard to get too agitated about commissions. Mm -hmm. We can try, though. We can try. We'll give it a good effort. I'm, I'm sure they will. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next item on the agenda, uh, Tom Murphy. Thank you, Alan. 
I have Thank no you, gentlemen. for you. I'm completely surprised to that. And it's but really long, so next week it's going to be incredibly long. Okay. Thanks. Do you have any sort of comments? No. Okay. Do we have any mail? I don't believe we have any new mail. Yeah, that, uh, Senator Hines acknowledges the receipt of, uh, of, of, our, of our letter. Okay. okay. That's good. Do we have any announcements? No, it doesn't look like it. Okay. Next meeting is next Monday. Peter, here uh, at 6 p.m. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Esther. Uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Uh,